I, 18F, tried setting boundaries with my dad, 50s? M, he told me he's got boundaries too, and the first demand was my exact address. How do I respond? Hello all. Recently I've tried establishing a better relationship with my dad who was previously a severe alcoholic and meth addict. I left home at 16 and moved across the country to make a better life for myself with my boyfriend and his family. I didn't speak to my dad for over a year and had two TPO orders against him, which are now expired. I don't want to cut my dad out forever but his recent behavior is concerning me. Our relationship right now is strictly over text. He began trying to convince me to move back in with him with him trying to bribe me with the car. I politely told him I am not moving back and to stop bringing it up. He went off the rails and claimed I was an evil daughter who abandoned him when he needed me most. Well, as you can imagine that didn't go over well and I cut contact again. I tried re-establishing our relationship much later, but immediately told him I had boundaries that he needed to respect. No demanding I move back, no insulting the family I live with anymore, no more drugs slash alcohol, and to take care of his mental health when he needed it. Fairly simple requests. He agreed to them and told me he's never touching drugs slash alcohol again. I thought all was well and went to sleep. I woke up this morning to a block of text from him claiming he's got boundaries as well. At first time like, okay sure, until I actually read them. He's demanding my full address and the family's main phone number, for emergencies and to apparently send me gifts. He's tried demanding the address from me before and I've immediately refused. He threw a hissy fit over it. I don't want anybody from that side of the family having my address for many reasons. I do not trust my dad having it. I know you guys don't know him personally so you may not understand exactly why I don't want him having it, but the short version is that my dad can be a very scary man. He's made me fear for my life many times when I lived with him. I don't know what to do. How do I respond to that? I've already told him before that I'm not giving out the address. Do I just repeat myself and risk going North Carolina again? I feel like he's trying to use me putting in boundaries to pressure me into respecting his demands by calling them boundaries as well. Please help me figure this out, I'd really appreciate it. Edit. Thank you for the overwhelming support. I didn't expect that many people to care about my issues like that. I've been taking my time reading through them all. Yesterday I sent my dad a text saying that I will not be giving him my address but if he's genuine in his desire to get to know the family, they're okay with talking to him over the phone. They're strong people and have told me that they will definitely not take shit from him if he decided to be aggressive. Funnily enough, my dad responded but didn't even acknowledge the compromise. I tried to make lol. He just talked about his dogs. I do understand that it'd be best if we cut contact, so this is his last chance. If he blows it, I'm done for good. I love my dad but I'll only take so much bullshit. It's very simple. Stick to your guns. You are in a safe space away from him and he can't physically hurt you. Do not give your numbers and address over. Either he respects you or he loses contact. Thank you, I appreciate the advice. I know I'm thousands of miles away from him but I guess the scared kid in me is still pretty terrified of him and his outbursts. Trauma is definitely fun, ain't it? That's not how boundaries work. You have rules for how you expect to be treated. He can have rules on how to treat him, but not ones that threaten your safety, comfort. If he claims that you having boundaries hurts him then he's a narcissistic pos and there is no point in talking to him, because his idea of respect is you tolerating abuse while your idea of respect is him treating you like a person. How many legs does a dog have if you call the tail a leg? 4. Calling the tail a leg doesn't make it one. Just because he's calling it a boundary doesn't mean he's not making a demand. Worse, he's demanding that you give up the ability to enforce boundaries. You've told him what methods of communication are open. He can choose if he wants to use them or not. I wouldn't give him anything. It's very suspicious that these are the first things he is asking you for when you re-establish contact. It's also disturbing that he is framing this as boundaries when it's clearly not. 
its demands for identifying information. I would seriously worry he will attempt to contact you, extort money, or even steal your identity. He likely knows most of what he would need to financially abuse you except your telephone and recent address history. It may sound paranoid, but this is someone with a history of being terrible. Tread lightly in letting them back into your life. I would also place a security freeze on your credit reports, it's easy to do and prevents someone taking out accounts in your name. DM if you need info on how to do this. Just because he's off drugs does not make him a better person tired of people thinking that. My mom wants me to apologize for my brothers hitting me where I have chronic pain. Formatting on mobile, etc. I'm a 20F, and I'm currently quarantined with my family. I have two brothers I'll call B1 and B2. B2 being the older one. Yesterday I wanted to spend my time with my siblings, I woke them up while still in bed and bought B1 some Starbucks. B2 didn't want any, I got him coffee in bed and later we went for a nice lunch. Again B2 didn't want anything. It'll tie into what happened trust me, later that afternoon. B1 was going to be playing video games on his computer. He told me not to bother him, being the older sister that I am. I bothered him. I tickled him, nothing crazy and I wasn't going at it hard at all. I started walking away. I went to go grab my stuff to go in my room since he didn't want to hang with me. As I was walking to grab my things, he walks up behind me and starts hitting me in the back. Hard. I have chronic back pain, and he percent 100 knows this. I cried out in pain telling him to stop. Almost in tears I told him that hurt a lot. He seemed concerned at first, but quickly changed attitudes. He said that's why you don't mess with me. And you should have listened when I said leave me alone. B2 chimed in saying yeah you should have left him alone. Their tone very matter of fact. I told the both of them that dealing with issues by being physical isn't right. And they they genuinely hurt me. B1 veined ignorance to my back problem. Despite me having it for 6 years and wearing a brace and being in a lot of pain in general. Playing stupid makes me face palm, and B2 said he didn't do anything wrong. Feeling ganged up on, I'm horrible with confrontation, I went to my room and cried. I felt like B1 didn't appreciate that I'm a nice sister. What sister gets you coffee in bed and tried to spoil you like her own child? Why couldn't they put away their pride and say sorry? Part to my mother if you've ever read any of my other stories you know that my mom is very very psychologically abusive to me. Her sons are her angels and can do no wrong, and I'm treated like some fuck up, despite technically being more successful. Once she got wind of the whole thing she descended onto me, telling me that granted it's never okay to hit a girl but B1 has been quarantined, B1 hasn't been exercising, letting out his anger, B1 is still growing and it's not his fault his testosterone isn't being let out. At B1 and B2 spun the story like I wasn't backing off and he felt like he needed to hit me to make me back off. She calls me stubborn for not wanting to apologize, saying you need to take responsibility for your part in all this and starts complaining about how excited she was to make pumpkin pie with the two of us. She's a classic narcissist, she wants up to squash the quarrel and go back to being friends again. I feel so small, and hurt. Anybody that has back pain knows that a flare lasts a couple weeks. At least mine do, now I'm in pain, and I feel like everything could be my fault. I feel B1 is okay with being physical with me. That thought scares me. I take full responsibility and admit that I probably should have left B1 alone when he wanted to be. I didn't mean for my tickling to lead to this mess. I'm sorry if this whole thing is messy, I do suffer with mental health issues and it is taking a bit of a toll on me. I don't want to go out of my way anymore to be nice to B1 and B2. I'm the only sibling that drives. If they wanted any restaurant food or something from the store they had to go through me. My mom has a very controlling dietary lifestyle so they can't ask her or my dad for stuff. My whole life my mom made me apologize to them for their actions. I am not apologizing. Edit, thank you everyone for all the love. My wild family brushed it off like some minor spat. Told everybody that we are gonna agree to disagree my mom gave me the side eye and my brothers are like what ifs. I have so so many stories growing up in this household. Something like this is considered not a big deal round here, funny enough B1 almost knocked out my teeth once and even then I got the blame. I'm so numb to
matter how they treat me that it's normal to me. I'm not going to file a police report. B1 is in high school and no matter how angry I get, I'm not ruining his future over this. Honestly I just want an apology. As soon as everything in my life is in order I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm constantly feeling small, ugly, blamed, and hated. My parents told me that they only had kids to carry on their legacy, I find having kids for selfish reasons to be disgusting, and I am the mandatory daughter for their perfect family. I want to cut them out, the only thing keeping me back, besides still having to convince them to transfer my stuff to me. My car, that I bought with my money, in my name, inheritance, etc is my grandma, she's kept me sane all these years, giving me nothing but love, I would never be as functional in life as I am without her, and I want to honor her death, thank you guys so much, you don't understand how validating it is to hear that I'm in a house with a bunch of Karens, sincerely you have my thanks, edit 2, in my grandpa's will he put the money in an account nobody but me have access to, I just need her to give me the account number, how old are your brothers? Time to move out of a very abusive household. Leave dot that dot house dot and dot family. I swear to god if you don't get your ass out of there I will personally come there and drag you to the police station to file a report or something. Stand up, pack up, and get your ass out. Thank you so much for being so kind. They make me feel like I'm the crazy one. You don't understand how validated I feel hearing that I'm not the crazy one round here. This advice is geared towards your survival and due to your chronic back pain. Since your brothers have escalated to physically assault and your parents will do nothing, just apologize if it will mend the problem while you work on your exit strategy. Though even if you do something nice for someone, you still need to respect their request to leave them alone slash not touch them. Nobody is entitled. Mention having working on leaving but have some hang ups. Well you are the scapegoat and your brothers are the golden children. There's a chance you aren't getting your inheritance anyway tbh. Families like that will use money to control you and later you'll receive nothing or have it stolen by your brothers. Your childhood mentors? There's a good chance you won't see those either, especially if they know they mean a lot to you. No that's rough and shitty but you will be okay without them. You are strong. The biggest thing that would be helpful that matters is your car ID slash birth documents slash social security cards. You can always reorder your birth certificate and social security cards. Since you drive, why not set up a PO box for private mail? Sometimes important documents have to be signed for. Do you have a friend that could help you out if needed to sign for said documents? At least start collecting spares before you leave. Did you buy your car? Did your parents buy you that car? Did you buy the car but it is in their name? I understand you may not report it to the police. Just please beware of your brothers. Be fake nice to them but focus on yourself. Could you privately start to call some women's shelters? I'm the guy, 37M, who posted whose daughter, 13F, wants her stepdad to adopt him. Here's what's happened three months down the line. Am I doing the right thing? Previous. So the adoption is going ahead still. No contact from her still even after the letter I wrote to her explaining my situation and what happened so she's at least respected my wishes of no contact. I'm thankful for that. The stepdad has been in contact though asking if I would be willing to meet them here for the last time in the UK when they can eventually come over. They need to come here to the local court for him to adopt her from the UK system as she was born here and is also a British national and they can't just adopt her in the states. After a good bit of thought, I said no, it just doesn't feel right. And I'm not at a stage that it wouldn't damage my mental health to see her. I'm in recovery from alcohol at last and despite a few relapses, I'm on the right track and have been sober a few weeks or so again. And owing to what I'll share below, I don't look in a way that I'd want her to remember me. I told my mum about this and she disagreed with my decision and said she may meet to say goodbye. She's welcome to, but I've asked her to not talk about it to me. Did I make the right decision there? I'm doing a lot better personally. I had an even worse time with my now ex-girlfriend. We were arguing while drunk and she slit my throat. 
thankfully I survived and she's facing prison, albeit only 5 years as some sort of GBH charge, it wasn't classed as attempted murder because she didn't plan it, it was heat of the moment and she tried to save my life so gets brownie points for that. But due to the fact I have a hideous scar on my throat, I wouldn't want her to see me like that as a permanent last memory. I'm also looking at getting a vasectomy. I feel it's for the best as I'm too damaged to bring any more life into the world and I can't promise I'd not give any more kids a fucked up head. Plus if I had kids and my daughter found out, that feels cruel. Why did my dad cut contact with me but now is playing happy families of his own? I told my parents about this and they're trying to get me to reconsider, saying I may regret it if I meet someone in future who wants to start a family and they'd love grandkids. On that subject I feel I should go through with it but again, are they right? Hopefully this will all be over in a few months or so, so I can stop living in the past. Edit about my reasoning for a vasectomy. From a comment I made, I have genuine reasoning for this. Growing up, I had an older half-sister who my dad didn't see for years and when she got back in touch, she was messed up in the head and jealous of me so as a result, we don't have a good relationship. I also had issues too because I didn't understand it all. Though I don't think it's right to make the same mistake knowing how damaging it can be. TLDR, recovering from alcoholism, adoption going through and turned a chance to meet my daughter for the last time down in my country. My parents disagree with the decision, and also disagree with my decision to get sterilized. 